Runners Only with Dom Harvey. Runners Only with Dom Harvey, the one million download episode where I'm being interviewed by one of the most popular guests on the podcast so far, JJ. Hello. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm, I'm just a one name, am I? Like Madonna. Yeah. 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 Well, JJ. You are. Well, what is your last name these days? You changed it back in a bloody hurry, didn't you? Well, yeah. Couldn't wait to get rid of that Harvey surname. Bloody hell. Well, I, um, look, I just thought if I'm, if I'm going to be interviewing you today, um, shouldn't I be sitting in your seat? Oh, do you want to? Should I? But is, that's going to muck up things for Jack, who's doing all the videoing, isn't it? Because he's he's adjusted the camera to your face and everything. Hey, yeah. Jack. Oh, sorry. Okay, should I? Okay, if you okay. want. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm sitting in your seat today. No, actually, don't bother. I can't be bothered. <laughs> I can't be bothered. But I do have a clipboard, so. God, so good. disruptive. Oh, all right. So here we go. Mm-hmm. You've done a million downloads. Yes. Well, that's amazing. I just want to. Applaud you for that. That's actually incredible, Dom. Thank you. Should you. be proud of yourself. Thank you. Yeah, I. Um, I mean, you know me better than most people, and you know how. Um, you know, you have a, you have a goal in mind, and I I do find it hard to enjoy celebrating the moment moments or the process. Mm. Like I'm constantly thinking about where I want to be, yeah. um, but I am trying my absolute best to like just pause and take stock of these moments, like a million downloads. You need to. We miss some of our best years on our radio show because we never stopped and thought about how good we were doing at the time. That's that's so true. But you say we, but I feel like that was more a me issue. Well, yeah, because you 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 well you were leading everybody in the team. Your attitude, your ambition, you were the one. It's like we we did everything to make Dom happy. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me sound even worse. No, it's no, good. actually. But- um, yeah, Dean Lonergan, um, <laughs> yeah, former radio presenter, uh, famous promoter, generally for boxing events, mm. and former New Zealand Rugby League player. He was on the podcast earlier this year, and he's sort of become uh, like a mentor in a way. Like, oh, that's yeah, good. It's um, cause I, I suppose he's like an entrepreneur, and he's done his own business stuff for a number of years, and he, he will just call me like every three to four weeks just to check in. Um, <laughs> I'm actually getting quite emotional thinking about it because it's the most undine Lonigan thing. Because um, you know, because everyone thinks of him as this, this big hard guy, but he'll call me every few weeks just to ask how it, how it's going, ask how I've got coming up, ask how the sponsorship's going, giving me tips for how I could approach people and ask them for sponsorship. And he's he's a, a couple of months ago he called me and I said, oh, I just had I had Rachel Hunter on last week and we're going out for dinner tonight. Ooh. And and he's like. Fuck, mate, you're going out for dinner with Rachel Hunter tonight. He goes, fuck the sponsorship, fuck everything else. You know, the, the, you do what you love and the money will come eventually. But he said, you need to like pause and appreciate that you're having these pinch yourself moments. You're having these amazing New Zealanders come over to your house for these incredible conversations. And he said, you're going you're gonna to look back in five years from now when this podcast is where you think you want it to be and you're going to miss these moments now. Mm. Yeah, he's right. Dean, thank you for supporting Dom. <laughs> no, you need people like him in your life. Does he have any money for sponsorship? <laughs> no, no, no. He's trying oh. to get. He's always oh. getting people to sponsor his events. Oh, okay. That's um, tough. The hustle is hard. The hustle yeah. is hard. Um, I've just taken off my jacket because I thought it was a bit warm in here. Right. Every time I, I'm just looking at the camera, do I look fatter on TV than in real life? Because I swear I never had this big chin. Okay, never mind. No, Anywho, you're, you're very hard on yourself. <laughs> Okay, Dominic, I've got a clipboard. Oh, now, Dominic. <laughs> on this clipboard, I have questions. And a lot of them come from your followers. So they sent a lot of questions. Okay. I'm going to get to them later. Okay. Okay, but first of all, I just want to say, you know, you've done a million downloads of your podcast, which pff, I don't think anyone would have predicted. And also you've done it really quickly. Um, so let's just, for one minute. Okay, we've only got five seconds. Five seconds of silence to commemorate. It's amazing. Good on you. Yeah, oh, I know. I'm, I'm just. I'm super appreciative for. Um, I mean, it's it's all been done independently, so there hasn't been any support from um, a big media company or any sort of organisation. So it's just basically done by. Um, I suppose, like you know, I need to give myself a pat on the back. Consistency by doing a podcast every fucking Monday without fail, <laughs> mm. um, but also people enjoying it and then going to the point of like sharing it on social media or word of mouth with their friends. So yeah. if you're one of the, especially if you're one of the early listeners before the video set up and everything else, and you told someone about it, thank you so much. 
Yeah. That's been instrumental in the growth. It's been amazing. Okay, um, so just into a few questions about about your podcast and your journey. Sorry, I just had to burp. burp. Well, you gave me a coffee before, <laughs> haven't had breakfast. Um, have you had a guest that has surprised you? As in like you already had a preconceived idea about them and either they came in here and they were way better than you expected or they were a real dick or whatever. Just someone who was not what you expected. Um, first of all, to answer part, part of that question, I'll say there's been no one that's been a dick. Okay. Uh, it, and there's, there hasn't been one episode yet that I've, that I've binned it where, because you know what I'm like with quality control. Like, yeah. But there's, there's been no one that I've spoken to and they've gone away and I've gone, oh, I, I don't even want to publish that. It's been a waste of time. Mm. Um, everyone's got a story as long as you give them the space to, to share. In terms of um, people that have surprised me, there's a couple actually, like um, Matthew Ridge and Adam Perori. Okay. Adam Perori was this year, so he's, he's on video. Um, Ridgey, unfortunately, this was in the early days of the podcast, so there's no video of it. Yeah. Um, but they were they were both just amazing, and you have these perceptions of these people. Like people generally think they're both like tossers or tools right. or arrogant Aucklanders or whatever. And they both they both really surprised me. And I think it's just um, maturity and age yeah. and chilling out. So maybe yeah. they were dicks, but they neither of them resonate with the person they were. You know, 15, 20, oh, 25 years ago. That's the thing. People change, people grow, people evolve. Mm. You learn from things that happen in your life. Yeah. And generally, well, you should become a better person mm. rather than a worse person. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and in a way, the, the, more I, the more I speak to people on the podcast and the more I think about it, um, I think, um, like, growing up and, like, having regrets or embarrassment about how you were is mm. a good thing. Yeah. Right? Because it, it does mean you've changed and it does mean yeah. you've evolved. Yeah. Well, by the way, I got you this great present. It's um, for those watching the video. It's a tissue box in the shape of radio. And I just thought I'd give you one because you've got moisture around the old nose oh. from, from just, no, just. I was just getting emotional about Dean yeah, Lonergan before. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought, you know. Yeah, that was a lovely gift, wasn't it? Where's that from? Like online Etsy. somewhere? Etsy. Etsy. Cool, eh? Yeah, because there have been some emotional moments in the podcast. There have been. A lot of people crying. Um, what sort of fan mail do you get now compared to when you were on the radio? Oh, this is something that's been a really, really big... Su- I mean, you worked at the edge for me for most of my time there. Yeah. And you there's a, there's a text system. People text in, you get it instantly. And it's... Well, I don't know. What it, what, what, what do you think the percentage was good? And, and Oh, mostly good. Yeah, like 80, 80, 20? Oh, probably 90% good. 90, okay. Um, Depending on what we were doing at the time. Yeah. All <laughs> there were the, a couple of things <laughs> we got 90% bad, but let's not go there. Yeah. Um, all the all the DMs I get have been have been really nice. Uh, there's some people that have um, sent me some like constructive criticism or, oh, that's good. or ideas, which I, I do appreciate. Um, but there's been n- nothing bad, and there's probably like an average of say twenty to thirty messages per week, and it's um, I, I found it really humbling actually that people would take the time mm. to do that because yeah. I'll listen to podcasts and I be- before this I'd never message someone to say hey I think you're doing a really good job and you know you, yeah. I really appreciate the work you're doing and I know but now I, I make a point of doing that because it like it takes nothing out of your day no and to just compliment like someone one little thing like that makes someone's day. Oh, I mean, JJ, like you, you, you know better than anyone, like just how much of a struggle this was in the first year yeah. in terms of like you're trying to convince people to sponsor it, trying to get trying to get money coming in for it. Mm. Um, but during those bleak, oh, not not bleak times, but hard times, um, it's the messages from people that sort of keep you going. Yeah, they keep for that sure. fire in your belly. Um, do you? My boyfriend Hawani wanted me to ask you this. I said to him last night, oh, what should I ask Dom tomorrow? And he asked, have you run more or less since you started the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, kids. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Hawani's fantastic. He's lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, funnily enough, less, really? a lot less. And oh. the reason being I've had a knee injury. Oh, right. Um, yeah. So I launched this podcast called Runners Only. <laughs> and then about three months after that, I got diagnosed with osteoarthritis in the inside of my knee. So... Um, I went to some physios and they told me I'd never run again. And I, I said to them, like, when, when you're a runner and you get told that you've got osteoarthritis, this is going to sound so melodramatic, but at that moment, it probably felt similar to someone getting like a cancer diagnosis. Honestly, it felt like the room was spinning around me. Really? Well, I thought I won't, won't be able to run again. And that's what she was saying. She, the, the physio, and she was, she was 
highly recommended and highly qualified. She said, if it hurts when you run, then the solution is just not to run. Um, Have and you been listening to her? No, no. No, I found, I found you another, haven't been. I found another physio. <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> My girlfriend, Ash, she said the same thing. She's like, Dom, you can't. You can't just keep replacing physios until you hear what you want to hear. <laughs> but it turns out you can. And you are a shocker. You no, know, and through sheer like perseverance and hard work, uh, mm. I've done I've strengthened the muscles and tendons around it and I can I can run again. I'm slower than what I was. Mm. But I, for the mental health benefits I can get what I need out of it. Okay. Well, so I'm good. ecstatic to be running again. What about mm. you? Have you run more or less since I launched the podcast? Ooh. <laughs> Let me think. What's less than nothing? Okay, nothing. Let's move on. Um, so I had, I know I know you wanted to get someone. There was someone that you wanted to get on the podcast. I probably shouldn't name him, should I? Oh, I no, you want, can. Okay, well, Paul Henry. Yesterday oh, yeah. I saw yeah. him and I said to him, oh, Don would really love to get you on the podcast because he is hilarious. Mm. And he's, he's got brilliant. S- and he's got so many great stories, I'm sure. Um, but he goes, first thing he said was, but I don't run. I hate running. Mm. So people have this perception that your podcast is only for runners. So uh, have you got any thoughts to change that perception at all? <laughs> I've been... Um yeah, I, I, that's a question I get a lot, and uh, like a, a lot of people that DM me, they'll say that they're like, "Oh, I, I put off listening to it for a long time because I'm not a runner," or they'll say, oh, "I don't run, but I love your podcast, lol." Mm. Um, and I've, I've been in two minds about it. Cause one of my favourite podcasts is this English guy called Stephen Bartlett, and he's got a podcast called Diary of a CEO. Mm. And I, I see he's an entrepreneur in the UK. I think he's one of the judges on like Shark Tank or Dragon's Den, one right. of those shows. So it started off as a Diary of a CEO thing, but now he just interviews big stars every week. Like last week he had Rita Ora on um, okay. for a deep chat, and she talked about Taika Waititi and all sorts of stuff. And so his name hasn't changed, and it's fine. Um so I'm in two minds about it. It's like, do you do you fuck with it, or but, but anyway, long story short, I am. I am going to change it. I th- Dom Harvey is fine. It's what's on the neon sign right here. Yeah, and you know, it is less about running now. Yeah, I mean, you do you do ask everyone about their running, but well, whether I they I haven't run even or done not. that lately. Well, there you go. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, we can uh, consider that, can't no, we? Well, the, change the f- and change your name. I don't think anyone's going to hate you for it. No, well, the, 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 I mean, the reason for it in the first place. So I launched the podcast in, um, I think, March or April 2022. And I spoke to some branding people, and they said to me, and, and their information was right at the time. They said the podcast market is so congested at the moment, you kind of need a niche to cut through. Mm, mm, and yeah. I think I, I, I discussed it with you at the time, I'm sure. Like the you name. probably did, but and you do have a niche, and now you've had a million downloads. And I think it's okay to change your name to Dom Harvey. What do you think, people? Send your feedback in. What's <laughs> Dom Harvey NZ at gmail dot com? Okay, um, I've got more questions. These are my questions I'm okay. asking you. I haven't got to the fan questions yet. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to talk about your sponsors mm-hmm. because I know how important they are. And um, and how awesome they are, Radix, for example. Um, mm, oh my god! Okay. Yeah, I want you to tell me about Radix and what they do, and why they're so amazing. Okay, um, Radix Nutrition. They've um, the founder is a guy called Mike Radling, who's an English guy that was raised in uh, Northland of New Zealand, and he's. I don't know, he, I'd say he's like the Elon Musk of New Zealand. Like he's just, his brain is like a computer. Right. And he, he just wants to make people healthier basically with what they eat and what they put into their body. And I've, I've, I was a fan of Radix like before they even sponsored the podcast, but yeah. th- they, they came to me. Thanks they came nice. to me and they, the podcast I mentioned before, Diary of a CEO, they said, oh, there's a podcast we like in the UK and it's sponsored by a company called Huel. And we think we're sort of like the Huel of New Zealand. And, um, we, we don't know what a podcast sponsorship arrangement would look like, but we really like what you're doing and we'd love wow. to be involved. And um, honestly, I, I cannot stress how important they have been for the growth of the, the podcast. Like yeah. it's their, their backing and their support and their encouragement. And not just with, with money as well, like with just advice and everything. Mm. It's been remarkable. And, you know, they're, they're a startup as well. And I'm sure... With the money that they're spending on the podcast, they could spend that. They could buy billboards or something with it, you know, or mm. get ads on the radio. But um, the fact that they've done this, it's, um, I mean, I'm, I'm indebted to them. I, re- I really am. Mm. So they came on at the beginning of the year for like a 10-week sponsorship to see what that looked like. Then at the completion of that, they uh, signed on for another six months. That's so good. But you need more sponsors 
because you know <laughs> it costs a lot. So you've got another one now too, skin and yeah, I had skin and so this is another really really um, generous thing about Radix. Like they um, they they made it clear uh, early on that. They couldn't give me as much money as what I wanted to do, the things that I want to do with the podcast. Mm. But they said they'd be open to co-sponsor with other people as long as they're non-competing. Yeah. Um, so they were happy to you know share with Skin Institute. So Skin Institute's been on for the last you know six weeks or so, um, and it's been bloody great. Yeah. It's allowed me to do things like the 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 lights in here and the cameras mm. and the whole setup. Um, it's allowed me to do that. Um, we've got a guy Jack on the other side of the wall that's yep. uh, mixing this video as we do it. Got a guy Jacques in Hamilton that makes little video clips for social media. Mm. Um, got a guy called Marcus that helps me out with the social Ooh. media. So it's a whole team we've got going on there. Yeah. And that uh, would not be possible without Radix. And what about your other sponsor, JJ Phoenix? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, she pays your rent. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. We, we've st- we've still got a we've still got a company, so our, we've still got our finances intertwined. And I've got to say, um, I probably would have given up last year sometime if it if it hadn't been for that sort of backing. Because um, yeah, be- before Radix came along, there were some great sponsors last year, like Dion Nash from Triumph and Disaster. He came yeah. along like uh, a couple of episodes into it. Um, he had a meeting and he said, listen, I don't have much money for marketing, but um, I'm happy to give you a couple of grand and sponsor a few episodes. And he said, I don't know, once once other companies see you've got a sponsor, maybe it'll start like a, you know, a tipping point effect and you'll get other people on. And he, and he was actually dead right. Yeah, um, that's so After nice that, Cookie Time Cookies came on. Awesome. Um, then Huawei and a couple of other couple of other short term sponsors. And that was that was really, really cool. So I can't thank Dion enough for that. So just this is just a word out there because you've got lots of sus- subscribers who probably have a bit of pull in the finance department at their work. <laughs> um, so why should they maybe jump on to uh, sponsor an episode or two of your podcast? Well, Do you I think they get value out of it. I, 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 well, I'm the I'm the CEO around here. I'm running the whole thing. I deal with the clients direct. So. I make I make sure I go over the top. Mm. Like I'll I undersell, go the over mile. deliver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's great, and I, like the, the numbers are really good, and you you'll get a good like good value for money and a good return on investment. I think because it's not like um, I don't want to shit on radio because that's what JJ does, and it's an industry I love. But I like, don't shit on radio. He's saying that I do radio because mm-hmm. that sounded like. I don't want to shit on radio because that's what JJ does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, it, and it's what it's what I did, and I love it. But r- radio ads, they they plan. If someone's listening to the radio in their car, when the ad break comes on, they probably turn it down, yeah. or they sort of tune out mentally. Um, podcast is generally such an intimate form of listening. Like people usually do it alone. Uh, they usually do it with um, their earplugs in, and they form a mm. connection with the host. So yeah. um, I know you've yeah, got me you sold on Radix and Skin Institute. Like go see them, see if they can deal with my varicose veins. Oh, listen, get your moles checked. Seriously. Oh, thank you. That's also a good thing to do. Um, now, you've written three books, Dom Harvey. This is JJ Feeney interviewing Dom Harvey if you've just tuned in. Oh, hang on. Yeah, three you've... average books. Oh. Unlike this one good one. <laughs> Actually, well, this is a great book. This is about um, our fertility journey that we went Dom's on. holding up my book, Misconception, for those just listening. Right. Um. You, you can't buy this. Can you buy this anymore? I think you can buy it online. Right. Very, very hard to get. You could probably definitely get ebook, but um, it's a great book. It's a it's a really helpful resource, and it should still be more readily available, in my opinion. I should probably do an update. Mm. But anyway, who has time? But what I was going to ask you, not about my books, but you've written three books. Have you got well, any? Actually, three point five because I'm a co-author of yours. Okay, do you have anything <laughs> any more in the pipeline? <laughs> not right now. Okay, do not, you... not right now. I'd love, oh yeah, I'd love to write another book at some point, but you, uh, you know how it, it's stressful and mm. it's exhausting. It's and time consuming. You and the the advance you get is fuck all. Yeah, um, it's less than you can an, get for the podcast. <laughs> in terms of an hourly rate, it's yeah. um it's terrible, but Hectic. it's but it, in saying that, it, it is the most incredible, satisfying feeling when you get that first. Um, package and you tear it open yeah. and you see the physical copy of your book yeah something that you've been working on for the last 12 to 18 months mm. and it's got that new book smell and you flick through it um it's an incredible feeling but yeah yeah probably works out to be worth about four bucks an hour 
<laughs> I don't even think it's that much. I honestly it's, don't. It's so much work. It is. Um, okay. Okay, Dom, well, your podcast is super popular. Popular. You've had a million downloads in just over a year. What are your top three podcasts that you have had? Would you know? Were your, mm. most, your most popular podcast that you've put out. Okay, well, the most popular, that's easy. Yours is number one. Is it? Yeah, the podcast that we did. Yeah, number one by a long way. No. In terms of downloads, in terms of feedback, in terms of YouTube views. Oh, I think I know what people, people like it when I give you shit, eh? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that was, but... Um, okay. Yeah, people, people loved that. Um, All right. The next one's probably... Oh, it's, it's, it's really hard to say because they're all favourites. Um, but a, an, another one was probably um, Zach Guilford, the former All Black, when yep. he came on the podcast around about a year, m- the middle of last year mm. uh, when he was still in home detention because um, he was so honest, so transparent, so vulnerable about all his fuck-ups and um, it generated a bit of publicity for the pop- podcast and um, it sort of helped, you know, like take the podcast to another level. But I, I just appreciate appreciated it appreciated his candidness um mm. i think it did well for him because i think it made zach guilford you saw him in a new mm. light and you know he instantly hearing that podcast all your preconceptions of him disappeared and were mm. replaced by what you heard on that podcast yeah i think he came across really well and really honest and he he really has um you know he's paid his i think he's paid for what he's done and he's learned a good lesson i think I think it was good for him mm. to also uh, get it off his chest. So that was a good, great podcast. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. One thing that he said, and another guy on the podcast, um, Dr. Paul Wood, who's uh, Dr. Paul Wood. You probably don't know the guy, but he's, he has published two books. Uh, when he was eighteen, um, he was spiraling out of control. His mum was was on her deathbed with cancer. He was a drug addict. Um, his drug dealer made a pass on him uh, when they were high, and he murdered him, like killed him with a baseball bat. Oh, and then he spent his entire twenties in jail, in uh, Parimarumo and Rimataka, some of New Zealand's hardest jails. And then midway through his sentence, he, you know, he spent the first five years just getting high all the time, getting in fights, yeah. just living the living the thug life in jail. And then he thought, what the fuck am I doing? So he started to educate himself, and he read a lot. He got a couple of degrees while he was in jail, and. At the moment, I, I, like we're friends on Instagram. He's in Paris with his wife. Like he's, but it, something that Paul said and Zach said, it's just really hard to get redemption in New Zealand. Yeah, you know, th- this guy's paid his price. Like he did a yeah. terrible thing. He doesn't shy away from it. Yeah. Spent his entire twenties in jail, mm-hmm. um, and he's turned his life around. But he said, and the same with Zach. There's people that just want to go. Nah, can't Cancel. forgive them. That's the thing I hate about, and it is New Zealand. We need to stop cancelling like so we all make mistakes and most of the people who are on social media blagging others god if only we could turn it around on you you know we've all made big mistakes in our life we all have regrets but we learn from them Mm. that's what you're supposed to as a child when your kid stuffs up you say that's okay you made a mistake we're learning from it we don't say fuck you i'm not going to be your parent anymore you're You're cancelled you don't like just give people a chance because people learn people learn after they've been punished they learn most people will learn to be a better person. There are mm. some people who are caught up in that cycle and, you know, mm. and those are the real yeah. criminals in the world. But if someone's making a real fist of it, you've yeah. got you to give them a shot. You've got to think, think glass half full rather than people, go. When people do bad things like Zach Guilford, he was in a bad place, you know, and we've all been in a bad place. We can do crazy things. Mm. You've got to give people a chance to learn and prove that they're trying and getting better, and he's done that. Mm. Your mate, Dr... Dr. Paul Wood. Paul Wood. I haven't heard that one of your podcast, and I must. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm like sitting here with you now, like a million episodes, da- um, a million downloads down, and with this nice video set up. Um, I do kick myself a bit that um, the first year was just audio only. So they, they live online, but I just don't have... I don't have the video, and there's some amazing episodes. But don't you have more people listening to the podcast than watching the podcast? Yes, yeah, completely. But okay. I feel like I feel like that will change over time. 
it's nice to have a video if you want to refer to it and if yeah. you want to go to it. So you have your podcast to listen to or you can watch it on YouTube Yeah, if you want. Okay. Yeah, um, um, yeah so, so yeah, they're, they're a couple of my favourites. Another ca- another couple of favourites are probably real early ones, like um, Jeremy Wells and Mitch James, who agreed to come yeah. on the podcast before it had even launched. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, I mean, they're both, they're both busy guys. They both get a lot of requests to do podcasts. So the fact yeah. that they um, allowed me to podcast them um, when I had no downloads or <laughs> reputation under my belt. Like, it was really cool. Yeah. That is cool. Mm. I really, you know, when you interview these people, I they just um, go up in my books too. You know, I have a lot of respect for them for coming on and giving you that chance. Um, what about, what are the podcasts, apart from the CEO one, that you love to listen to? Mm. Oh, there's a bunch. Um between Two Beers, which is a New Zealand one. Yeah. Actually, th- I mean, you could say they're a competitor. Like, we do, a, we double up on a lot of the same content. Yeah. And it's a long-form interview, mm. but um, they do a fantastic... I'm in awe of what those guys do. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Why is it, Why are they so good? Well, they, they ask good questions, and then they just butt out, really, and let the person, <laughs> let the person talk. Um, because I'm from a radio... A, <laughs> a lifelong radio background, I... I, I'll listen back to a podcast. I know I've got a tendency to like interrupt people, or I don't, know, you know, I I, fucking, I listen back and I fucking hate myself sometimes. No, but that's because in radio you've got limited time. You've got three yeah. minutes for the voice break, and you've got to keep interrupting the person to move the interview along to where you need it to go. Mm. So we trained in that way. So I get it, but you've got you've got better at stopping and listening to I'm, other people. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. And, and another thing that I've got from those guys between two beers, um, two guys called Steve and Seamus. Um, you, you know when we were in radio how um, like I've had time to reflect on this and I thought is this a me problem or was this how we were conditioned by management and I like I, I don't want to shirk responsibility for my own actions but I do think it was something that we were fed from management you know how the people at other radio stations were the enemy oh yeah you know it was like I never went for that but I know that's the way that they try to make it yeah yeah, well, we even had a friend um, when we first moved to Auckland with The Edge. Our friend Stu did the nighttime show on ZM. Yeah. And he'd come around and have dinner with us every Sunday night. And I think it was his manager at ZM said, oh, it's not a good look you hanging out with JJ and Dom. <laughs> they do we the breakfast like, show. He on the... started on our radio show back yeah, in yeah. <laughs> when he was 15. So there was this this weird sort of thing. I don't, is it like that now or have they chilled the fuck out Oh, no, nah, it? it's not like that now because too many people have switched teams and gone right. back and forth. and It's not like that now. No, I don't think it should be. I just no, think... absolutely it shouldn't. But, I mean, realistically, there's probably, say, how, 200 people in New Zealand yeah. that do radio. Like, what are the chances? You do the same fucking job. The anyway, only w- enemies in radio are the people who are absolute fuckwits who don't, <laughs> who don't give anyone else a time of day. And I think they know who they are. <laughs> the other fuck what's in life mm. <laughs> um, mm. no but I was going somewhere with this um, like so Steve and Seamus between two beers um, like we we should be competitors like I, I should see their podcast on a Monday morning see they've got fucking Mark Ellis and be <laughs> like those motherfuckers how did, <laughs> how did they get Macca and I didn't but honestly I I, oh. I root for them and uh, yeah you know, and you I, don't want the same guests as them I oh, know some of them I do. Oh. <laughs> New Zealand is a limited pool, but they they've, they've been great, and we we share ideas and we share resources, and they they've got a social media guy called Marcus, and they introduced yeah. me to Marcus. And well, the world is all about collabing nowadays. Yeah, you know, you get together with the people who do well like you, and you build a strong team. Mm-hmm. So, what other podcast do you like? Um, Joe Rogan, if it's a guest that I'm interested in, mm-hmm. he talks um, forever though. Well, the podcasts are so long. That's what I found. That's what I found really interesting about it before I launched this because I. I um, so finished on radio, then spent about six months just thinking about a podcast and studying podcasts and working out what I liked and what I didn't like about other ones. And I'd go, I'd start to go for a run and I'd bring up, a, say, Joe Rogan and Post Malone and it would mm. be three and a half hours. Um, but then you go for a run for an hour and a half, two hours, and mm. pause it and go back and listen to it. And I found that when I first launched this podcast, people would say to me, oh, yeah, I don't know if I want to listen to – I like Jeremy Wells, but I don't know if I want to listen to <laughs> 80 minutes of him. Um, but then people get their head around podcasts and the fact it's not like a TV show. You don't have to sit down and watch it or listen to it from start to finish. No, you, you can watch, it listen to 20 minutes in your car. If you're bored, go to something else. Mm. Um, and other podcasts I like um, – Dax Shepard, you know the actor? Yes, he was in... Um, He's done Chips, Without a Paddle, like some um, sticky comedies. Yeah, no, what was the... Um, uh, 
the stunt show we used to oh, always... Jacka. Oh, Jackass. Yeah, no. Jackass. Wasn't uh, he from uh, Jackass? Punk. Oh, was he from Punk? Punk. And he's married to... Um, Kristen... Kristen Bell. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he does a podcast called Armchair Expert, and that's amazing. That's one of my favourites. What's that about? Oh, it's just him interviewing... Him and... Um, I think it's their, like, nanny or housekeeper, Monica, and they... Oh, yeah. Um, they, and they, they just interview super famous like they've had a Prince Harry on oh, yeah. and Obama um, but yeah I, I, I listened to that before I launched mine and I'm like that's the sort of conversations I want to have with people just real conversations it's, yeah, n- yeah very uninterviewy yeah yeah so I love it I love that one um, yeah there's a couple of others as well mm. um, okay now I'm getting on to that's all for now. I'm turning the page. So I've got my clipboard here. Um, I have questions that your fans have sent in. Um, so I'm just going to go to them now. <coughs> You're very like, disorganised. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have this sort of pause on radio. No, I must say, these chairs, they look good, Dom, but maybe we could invest in some Lazy Boys. Yeah. I feel like I lazy want to put boys, my feet why? up. <laughs> I just feel like oh, I want to put my feet okay. up. <laughs> <laughs> you, actually, you, you, yeah, the more comfortable the guest is, I think. Yeah, the more I you, think. Yep, yeah, let's do that. Okay. I, I have I have contemplated ideas like like changing the set and getting like a table so you're sitting across people. Oh. But I don't know. I feel like if someone's relaxed and they're in a comfortable chair. Mm. I mean, this chair is comfortable, but. Lazy boy, yeah. I don't know if you'd fit them in this room though. Anyway, oh, no. need to get some more sponsorship money first. These yes, are target please. cheers. Yes, are they? Oh, <laughs> um, yes. Please, please sponsor Dom's podcast. Oh, you're making it like, sound real needy. Oh no, I'm just saying it because we want to do some flash things, get new chairs. Okay, um, fan questions. Mm. Oh, yeah, have you not pre-read? Well, I have, but I'm just changing my mind okay. now. Yep. Your dream guest list. Mm. Oh, New Zealand or international? I mean, in, international, well, Elon Musk. I'd love fucking Elon Musk. That would be incredible. Have you yeah. thought about going overseas and getting some big names? Yeah. Um, so I went to Boston earlier this year with my mum to run the Boston Marathon. Mm. Oh, this, this is a funny story. Um, I, I did find a few people in Boston to speak to, not not big names, but fabulous guests. So yeah. one of them was um, Billy Evans, who was the Boston police commissioner at the time of the Boston bombings. Amazing. Um, he helped capture those um, those young terrorists, and there's a Netflix documentary series about it, and he's all through that. Um, I just found his email address online. I emailed him, and he, he said yes. And it's amazing. Crazy. Some some random from New Zealand he's never heard of. <laughs> um, and there was Sarah Gerhardt, who's an author. that She's got a great running book. She met with me in Boston as well. And um, a guy called Ryan Hall, who's, uh, I'm actually releasing this podcast in the next week or two, uh, America's Fastest Runner Ever in the Marathon and Half Marathon. Really? And he gave me an hour of his time. There was, so Boston's like a train ride from New York. It's a few hours away. Yeah. So I thought, who could I speak to in New York? I mean, th- there's no use me trying to get Taylor Swift or Beyonce or Jay-Z, because it's just not going to happen. <laughs> Feels like it's a waste of breath. Of course, yeah. Um, so you think, who could I possibly get? So I emailed Billy McFarland. Does the name? Hang on, wait. Fire Festival. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The Fire Festival documentary, the festival yeah. that never happened. So I messaged him. Um, cause he, he, I think he was in jail for like 18 months for fraud from the, mm. f- the Fire Festival. And he's out now. And I messaged him. Um, and he was prepared to do the podcast. And I could have gone to New York to do it. But he wanted two and a half grand US. Oh, okay. Which. He's still scamming people then. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did. Um, I mean, no one pays for interviews. Yeah, I mean, fear, I mean, like fair enough. In a part of me thought, oh, that's fair enough. In a way, it's his time. You got to put yeah. a value on your time. Yeah, what? What's the return on investment with him? But I have. I don't know. I don't know if that would. Comp- I haven't had to pay anyone yet. But I don't know if it would compromise it or not. I don't know. Part of me thinks if you're paying him money, he'll give you a better performance because he's being paid for it. But mm. part of me thinks, oh, he's just doing. He, he's not. It doesn't even want to speak. He's doing it for the money. Mm-mm. So I don't know. You definitely need to get someone to sponsor the episode if you're paying someone. You know, like <laughs> like Rhythm and pay. Vines, yeah. a festival that actually is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, but so who's on your dream guest list apart from Elon Musk? Um, from New Zealand, um, top of the dream list, and I, I don't know if this is going to happen. Would be um Scott Razor Robertson. Oh yeah. Hang on. Awesome. Let me um. 
let me let me find our text exchange. I have oh, tried. Oh, you have. Oh, okay. Oh, I, oh, I, I have tried. Oh, this will be good. Hang on. How do I? How do I search? access my text messages? Scott. Oh. You want some help there, old man? <laughs> hang on. I'm going to have to edit this out. This is terrible. Boomer. Hang on. Hang on. No, where, hang on. where is it? I think you leave it in here. Right. No. We can time how long it takes Dom Scott. to find a text message on his phone. No, no, no. The, the problem is, um, oh, there it is, Scott Robertson. So, okay, scrolling all the way. Oh my God, this is embarrassing. So, oh, okay. There's a lot of you yeah, messaging him and no replies. Blue is me. <laughs> <laughs> a, like, I've honestly, I've been persistent. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes yeah. that's a way to get things. So, uh, 28th of July, 2022. Hi, Scott. My name is Dom Harvey, blah, 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 blah. Thanks very much for reading this punishing long, long message. So that was um, July, August. Um, I repeated the same message again because he hadn't responded. Okay, so then, you're just like, oi, beep, beep, listen. Yeah, in case you missed it sort of thing. And yep. then he responded straight away, Friday, 5th of August. Hey, Dom, good to hear from you. Sounds cool, but um, I have a new rule, only one podcast a year. For oh. me personally... All the media take it as an interview and they get articles out of it. Maybe next year? Cheers, Razor. Oh, okay. So I replied. I waited a day. Thanks for the reply, Razor. Respect that rule, brother. I'll message you on January 1. <laughs> he, yeah, um, no doubt you get a shit ton of requests to do these things. If it makes any difference, my focus would be a more in-depth conversation about you and what makes you tick. We could even avoid any clickbait about All Blacks coaching stuff entirely. Mm. But I'll leave, it, I'll leave you alone for now. All the best and I hope to meet you sometime, Dom. Mm. And that was so. That was August. No reply. Now, remember, he said oh, one podcast a year. So I wasn't too desperate. I messaged him on Thursday, the twelfth of January. <laughs> <laughs> Razor, happy new year, mate. I hope twenty three is off to a great start. Just following up on our text exchange from last August. It would be an absolute honour to um, get you on the podcast this year. I'm getting in early to make sure oh, I beat James Marshall to it. Ha <laughs> ha. Who's James? Marshall? James Marshall was one of Razor's assistant coaches at the Crusaders. He also does a great podcast called What a Lad okay. with rugby players. Mm. So anyway, that was uh, January, no reply. 23rd of February, I sent him another one. 21st of March, sent him another one. Jeez. Uh, May 7, I sent him another one. Oh my God, he hasn't blocked you by now. Um, <laughs> and he replied to that one on May 7. Um, hey Dom, I have banned myself from podcasts. Oh, okay. Thanks for asking, but anything I say is a headline at the moment. Once I start the job, let's see if we can do this. And then he signed off with the razor emoji. Oh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> he's got a sense of humour. He has a very good sense of yeah. humour. So I, I get it. I understand what he's saying. Yeah. It would suck in his position, sure. And even though you say, you know, you won't do clickbaity stuff, journalists will try and find something. Yeah. So I, I understand that. But it would be cool if he just, mm. you know... If he, he'd, he, if he's, he'd give you, come on, Razor. Come mm. on, Razor. He's not responding to my text. He's certainly not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he'd be great, though. He's just a fascinating guy. And I I, um, I don't know if he'd know the answer to this, but I can't help but think um, that Ted Lasso or Jason Sudeikis yeah. um, like got the inspiration for Ted's dancing moves off Razor. I well, can't he, help but think that or wonder but that. who really knows the answer to that? Unless you ask J Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, or Razor. You know. Maybe Razor knows or has, was given heads up or has been told. No. I don't know. He wouldn't know. No one's going to ring up and go, oh, hey, mate, we're inspired by you doing your break dancing at the end of every game. We're going to start this TV show. No one's going to yeah, do that. Yeah. No one's going to give the credit to someone else. Yeah. If they see someone from New Zealand, people in America or England, they see someone from New Zealand doing something, they'll just think, oh, just little old New Zealand. We can copy them. No <laughs> yeah. one will know. Well, I suppose, yeah. yeah. There's no need to tell anyone, but yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. Has anyone said... Oh, I was going to say, has anyone said no to you? This is These are fan questions. Oh, bloody razor. The <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, oh, there's been a few, actually. Um, and I, I, I understand that. Um, like the, the difference between... Cause you and I did radio for the same length of time, about 30 years. And mm. every interview you do on radio is kind of transactional. Like, the, like you had Paul Henry on your show yesterday. Yep. He's promoting a new show. Generally, any guest you have in has got something they're promoting. An agenda, yeah. Yeah. So this, there's kind of no agenda. It's just a conversation. Mm. And um, it does get quite personal. So I can understand that a lot of people would be reluctant to go on. 
Yeah. I, I did. Um, I messaged someone the other day who I thought I thought it should be a great guest, and she replied to me. And it, um, let me find this. But Kronger. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought she's doing a little tour at the moment, or she has been. I thought I thought she'd be amazing. Like she's because she, we we had a I remember we had her into to the edge once for us. Do you remember? Were you there that day? She came in for an interview, and she like um, it it was um it was a it was a crap interview. Like she. She she looked down. She didn't make any eye contact. Yes, she was sort yes, of off yes, the mic. Yes. It was her, was that her first interview with us? No, 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 no. This was oh, like right. ten years into it. And we first were like, interview something's was wrong in, with her. Yeah, was yeah. when the, the Edge was in Hamilton. She came yeah. out with um, Drive and Sway, mm. and she was young and she was like like vibrant and enthusiastic. She was a new thing. Yeah. Then we had her in like five or six years later, and she 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 she, she was just staring at the ground the whole time and was really sort of flat and. I remember at the time, like from a selfish perspective, thinking, oh, that was a fucked interview. Mm. Um, and I look back now and it's like, I just want to know what she had going on. Like she was obviously stressed or fatigued or depressed. Yeah, and sick of being dragged around the interview circuit by your record company mm. manager. Musicians get worked hard. Mm. They do. Um, and may- maybe, maybe it wasn't necessarily the music she wanted to be doing or maybe she's yeah. getting people telling her. How- anyway, she replied to me... Um, Saying, hey Dom, thanks. You know, you know, I heard your guy on Espina interview and I thought it was excellent. I really enjoyed it. You know I'm not a runner though, ha ha. I yeah. Yeah, runner. Um, but I should be. Can I just say maybe one day to the podcast? I'm so over talking about myself because we just did a press tour campaign and I just couldn't do any more. Like really bored of myself <laughs> promoting. <laughs> thanks for asking though, maybe when I have something new out. Is that okay? Oh, she's so sweet. Yeah. I get that too. Um, well, it's nice that she listened to one of your podcasts. Yeah. Maybe Didn't feel compelled to go back to listen to any more. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a big time commitment. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, well, Beck, I hope she's okay. Um, all right, what else? Someone wants to know how much research you do and for the, each guest, and uh, do you have any help with that? No, no. Um, I, I think even if... Um, even when I get to the, I have this vision in mind of where I want the podcast to get to, but even when it gets to that stage, I think I'd still do the research myself. I'll just go for a run and I'll um, search the podcast apps to see if that person's done any previous podcasts and listen to that and do some research online. Um, so I research really hard, but I, I find it sort of um, a, like a, a balance. I don't want to over-research, and that's not a laziness thing. No. It's just because you know, I want to go in with, with notes to make sure I don't miss anything. But I also want to have like an air of curiosity as well. Yeah, and you want to be surprised when yeah. they tell you something that you didn't know. Yeah, that's. I mean, uh, yeah. If you ask a question and you already know the answer to it, or it's kind of like you're going in with an agenda. You know what I mean? And I, I mm. prefer to go in with sort of an open mind and curiosity. Fan question: How much editing do you do on an episode? Um. Oh, very little actually. Yeah, yeah. None. Of, actually, the podcast that you and I did, I, I um, I didn't edit that at all, and I haven't even gone back to listen to it. I started uh, to listen to it and edit it, but it was just too hard. Yeah, you should have edited a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, but it, yeah, very, very little to be honest. I um, I, I listen back to edit, and I just get annoyed with my own voice. Mm. I I know that I stutter, and I know that I stammer. Oh, uh, so some of the best broadcasters do. Yeah. Paul Holmes used to stutter and stammer all the time. No, 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 no. You know, <laughs> and and Duncan Garner. Yeah, yeah some yeah, of the best broadcasters because you're thinking you're so smart. Mm. You're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. You talk, you talk. Uh, no, you, even me, I'm stuttering and stammering right you, now. You, you know what it's like, though. People people think that if you're on radio or you're doing a oh. podcast, you like the sound of your own voice. I don't think anyone really likes the sound of their own voice. Definitely not. Yeah. People hate the sound of their own voice. Um, oh, there are some people who do. The people that talk like this, <laughs> they love the sound of their own voice because no one is actually born to talk like that. Um, all right, some of these questions are repeated, so let me think. What is one? Oh. Here we go, here we go. Mm. When are you interviewing Mike Puru? Oh. JJ Mike and Tom Days. Whenever, yeah, whenever he, whenever he's ready and wants to. Have you asked him? I messaged him a couple of weeks ago because I had someone that pulled, out, that pulled out at the last minute. So I had mm-hmm. um, Jack around here ready to go. So I was like, Mike, come over. But he was just on his way to go to TV3 to do the weather or something. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it's funny. After we did our interview the other week, um, we talked about Mike and that because it's... Um, for anyone that doesn't know, the three of us work together on the edge 
for a number of years. It was the JJ, Mike and Dom show. And you, you, you kind of don't realise it at the time, but you look back and you go, holy shit, that was successful. And mm. that, was the, that was the most successful period for the radio station, The Edge, I think. But when you're going through it, you don't, you get told by management that you're shit all the time. Yeah, <laughs> do better, do so better, do better. You, you, you don't, you don't realise what an impact you're having on people's We've lives. We've been bullied our whole lives <laughs> um, by management. But we talked about Mike in that interview. Uh, another co-host we didn't mention was Clint Randall, who's still at the edge now. Yeah. A couple of people messaged me, why didn't you talk about Clint? And oh. I thought, oh, th- there's no beef there or anything. Like, me and Clint are still really good yeah. friends. Yeah, Clint's go amazing. His, yeah, he's a good dude. But um, like from the pers- perspective of your career, like, you and Mike and I worked together for maybe a dozen years. Yeah. You worked with um, Clint. Randall, he was known for, like, two years, maybe. Yeah, not very long. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it didn't feel worth occupying too much of the podcast space with you on that. No, but I mean, I love Randall. Mm. Clint, as he's gone back to his first name, now he's allowed to. <laughs> he was so he was so dark about being called Randall. Like, he was. It, was. it was really weird, though. This is another weird radio thing. So we had a guy called Clint Roberts that was working the afternoon show at the edge at the time. Mm. And radio management think listeners are so stupid that their head would explode if there were two Clints on the same radio station yeah. at different times. Yeah, which is why Randall had to be called by his last name. But Clint Randall is one of the nicest guys. He is very talented and he's so good looking. Like, it's he's ridiculously good looking. And it's very hard to work opposite him and concentrate every day. <laughs> I was like, hey. I was right there. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, no, no. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, he, is, he is great. Does, he talks a lot, though. Oh, he like, does talk well, a lot. I'm talking too off much. the air here. So we had this um, relationship with Mike and. Yeah, I suppose every radio breakfast show dynamic is, works differently. And w- we were good in silence, the three of us. So when the songs were playing, I'd be on my phone, you'd be mm. doing whatever you're doing. Mike would always be doing secret stuff on Grindr. Or <laughs> 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 no, he'd, he'd be looking at real estate quite a lot. And I'd be like, oh, what are you, what are you doing? You're looking at buying a new house? And he'd just minimise the scream and say, never you mind. <laughs> like everything was super secretive with Mike. Yeah. And then, um, so then, then, then Mike moved on and um, Randall took over and... Do you remember, like, he just talks non-stop. So when the songs are on, he just chats, commentates life, <laughs> commentates everything. Do you remember that one day that you told him off? No. You said something like, um, oh, what, what, what was <laughs> I it? I can imagine doing oh, it because I it can't like, bear it. It was like you broke his heart. Oh. You're like, hey, Randall, I don't mean to be rude, but can you please just shut up for a few minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Like a child, you know when you've got a child yes, in there. Yes, he's excitable. That, when you're in that five and six year old, and they're always asking questions, and you're just like, "Okay, hun, just give me a minute." Like, <laughs> but why, mum? But why? But like, Randall was a bit like that. Randall, I love you so much, but you yeah, do talk great. a lot. Okay. Anyway, next one. Someone wants to know: Do you get paid when someone listens to the podcast? If not, I feel like you should be getting something out of what you're doing as you put a lot into it. It seems only fair to get some money for what you do. Do you get paid when someone listens to the podcast? Well, that's um that's a very interesting question. So, um, you have like what's called a podcast host. So I'm with um a company called Acast, and they have uh, sales reps that sell some ads. So sometimes you might hear an ad in the beginning of the podcast, middle of the podcast, or the end of the podcast, and you get paid for that. Now, if you're Joe Rogan and you have 11 million listeners a week, mm. you can make some, he probably makes a couple of hundred thousand dollars per episode. Wow. Like crazy money. Mm. Um, if you're a popular podcast in New Zealand, um, well, you do my invoices. What do I make? Yeah. Like 300 bucks a week from Acast? Oh, no, not that much. Oh, no, like, you might make about 250 bucks a week. Yeah. yeah three, but so, you can't live on that. No, you, 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 can't, you can't. I mean, that sounds like, oh, okay, but you can't live on that. No, mm. um, and it's definitely, yeah, I mean, I've got mouths to feed now. You yeah, know, yeah. Right, Jack, Marcus, and Jacques. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think the way to do it in a small country like New Zealand is to, um, to get good sponsors on board that believe in the content you're doing. Mm, um, mm. Like Radix have been. Yeah. Um, so there's your answer. So everyone who listens to the podcast, you don't pay anything. It's free content mm. for you. Well, JJ, you've even said to me over the past year, like, why don't you get a paywall or why don't you make people subscribe? But I don't know. I feel like the numbers are just – like New Zealanders are tight. So if you say to someone, yeah, five bucks a week, it's less than a cup of coffee, the numbers would just drop off considerably. And I, I really believe um, there's some value in the conversations I'm having with some really inspiring New Zealanders. Mm. And people can listen to them and go, oh, fuck. Wow. Oh, Hannah Wilkinson's got shit going on. I know. And Hannah she's Wilkinson's the biggest amazing. Fo- hey? She's amazing. It was such yeah. a good podcast. 
Yeah, and this week Maya Wilson from the Silver Ferns, oh. the Silver Fern Gold Shoot. I've seen her um, snippets that you put on your. Yeah. She looks like a real crack up too. Really she's crack good. Up. And she's, so, and but she's you, you, you see these people and you see that they've got shit going on and it just makes you feel normal. So I wouldn't want to restrict that by putting mm. like a barrier in place for people that can't afford it or don't want to pay for it. Yeah. Um, Dom, you've had a million ep- downloads of your podcast. I've just thrown away my clipboard because I'm out of um, <laughs> pre organised questions. Um, where to from here? Like, what do you what do you see happening? What's you know? Envision the next five years, for example. Will you still be doing the podcast? Will you be maybe perhaps doing something else? Will you get back into radio? Will you write more books? Like, what? Where's Dom Harvey going? Well, one thing I've learned since doing the podcast is um, you can't always predict where it's gonna where it's gonna end up. And there's a quote I really like. It was from um, I think it was from Steve Jobs, the Apple guy. And he said something like, people people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate how much they can do in five years. Mm. So I'm only one year into the journey now. It's probably going, well, no, it is going, it is going better than what I anticipated. In terms of the sponsorship, in terms of the downloads, in terms of the feedback, in terms of the quality of guests, in terms of everything. So I, I just want to keep going and I'm not quite sure exactly where it's going to lead, um, but I feel like it's leading. Like I, I had, um, for example, I had... Um, uh, Miyamoto on a couple of months ago, mm. who's a world champion boxer, yeah. and hell of a backstory, like harrowing backstory. Mm. Just you married at a young age because she thought that's what she had to do because she was religious, and then it was the relationship was incredibly violent and abusive. And as a result of that podcast, um, we're now doing some public speaking together. Oh, so wow. okay. she's she's not. Um, confident enough just yet she will be though in time Mm. at doing like keynote speaks or speaking about herself so they want it to be a situation like this where we're on stage where you're prompting her yeah so i guide the conversation yeah and i if you said a year ago that that could be a thing i you know i wouldn't have seen a a path how so the podcast is opening up some other different doors so i really don't know but i'm really enjoying what i'm doing um i feel like it's only going to grow and get better Mm -hmm. and um yeah i i don't know I'd love to do a book that was an easy book. So I was thinking like Lessons from Legends, yeah. where I just get like transcripts of some of the podcast and read them. <laughs> well, I think that would be good. Yes, yeah, so I don't I, actually have to people write People would it. be interested in reading because not everyone's going to hear the podcasts. Yeah. You know, so um, having be able to flick through and pick the legend you want to read about and stuff. Yeah. I think that's a good idea, Dom. Because I've done, I've done three books which are just shitty stories from my own experiences. Yeah. It'd be nice to have like a, like a beautiful like, coffee table book. Um, honouring these people that have given their time and been oh, on the Oh, you'd podcast. have to bother them again for better photos. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's, <laughs> but I, was I, a, I don't think if people, it was a coffee table I don't book. think people would mind if they if they were going to get like a beautiful portrait photo taken yeah. and it's going to be in this handsome book. Well, you're really saying your ideas out loud here. Let's hope no one else steals it. Manifesting. Well, hey, one thing I've learned from um, other people that have helped me on the way, um, Between Two Bears, who we talked about before, mm. James Marshall with his What A Lad podcast, mm. um, Carl Thompson, our old producer, yeah. who does a podcast called Married, Divorced and Dating. Um, sharing is sharing is better. Right. Like, There's another quote I really like. It's like, don't make the walls of your house bigger, make the dining room bigger. Okay. And what it means is like, don't shut people out. Yeah. Have more people in. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it's a different way of looking at things, but I like it. Oh, honestly, Carl, who I mentioned before, our old producer, um, you, you, like, you know me better than most people. I'm pointing right now to a printer in the corner of the room. You come round to change the cartridges. Um, if it says the paper gate's not shut properly, you come round to fix it. I'm hopeless with technology. This podcast would not have been um, possible in the beginning without Carl. He told me the equipment. He told me exactly what equipment to buy. He loaned me some equipment to have a play around with. He showed me how to work. He basically wrote a podcast for Dummies List. That's awesome. Yeah. By the way, I've ordered you a new printer and I got a notification saying it's on its way. Okay, so I'm going to get one with the, it's an eco tank, so you just fill it up. You can't stuff that up, surely. <laughs> oh, I can. I'll come around and install it for but you. You know, when, it, when, <laughs> I, when, I, when, it, when there's things that I can't do, like at the moment I'm, I'm trying to set up like a business Google Drive, so all the videos from all the podcasts right. go into this. I, and I, I don't know how to do it and I need other people to help me oh. and it makes me feel so shit. 
because my brain just doesn't my brain just doesn't work that way. I feel sad <laughs> that neither me nor your girlfriend Ash are here to help you do that. Ash, I'll help but him out when I can. I don't know. These things you know, I had um Oh, Reese Darby's another guest I had on the podcast, and he came. Sadly, there's no video of him either because he came on last year. Yeah. It was very, very gracious of him. He's a big star, and he yeah. came on yeah, when the amazing. podcast was still growing. It was really cool. And he said something. Um, he's he's on the spectrum somewhere, or he's got ADHD, and he's he said the way it looks for him is that he struggles with forms, like filling in forms. And oh, his yeah. wife has to do all the forms, and that resonated with me. It's like <laughs> if, if I'm if I'm filling in forms for like a bank loan or something, I. You can do it seamlessly, like a mm. hot knife going through butter. <laughs> For me, it's a struggle. Yeah, that might be the ADHD, which I'm pretty sure you have. Mm. But you know what? That's fine. I know how you work. If you've got forms to fill out, I'll sort it out and I'll put a little post-it note next to where you sign. Here, sign here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come around and put you, change your printer cartridges. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, oh, it's okay, very, Dom. It's I'm very... still here for you. I, I appreciate that. I, <laughs> God, I, I've got so many people helping me, and I, I feel sometimes I feel lazy. I feel like I'm a piece of You're shit. Not not, lazy. <laughs> no, You're not lazy. You're not a no. piece of shit. You've got to stop this negative self-talk, no, Dom. But... You are way. You're a much better person than you give yourself credit for. No, but when there's simple things that most people can do, and but you I, can do things that other people yeah, can't do. I know, and I'm sure there's other other people that haven't been diagnosed but they think they might be on the spectrum somewhere or they might have ADHD mm. who feel exactly the same way but there's things that everyone can do and you just can't and you think what the fuck is wrong with me there's nothing wrong with you you just think differently but you offer so much more <laughs> that other people can't <laughs> yeah, offer yeah, so just embrace your yeah, uniqueness yeah. embrace yeah. who you are and what you can do and don't worry about the stuff you can't, because as you've learned, you just get other people to do it for you. Mm. And you're doing pretty well at that. And Dom, you're awesome. And that, I'm going to wrap up this podcast now. Thanks for listening. That was Dom Harvey being interviewed on his own podcast, Runners Only. I'm JJ Feeney. Good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. When have you listening to this? Do I not even get the last word? Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, off you go. Well, no, you've kind of ruined it now. Oh, f this is Runners Only. Yeah, yeah, let's get it started. This is Runners Only with Dom Harvey. Uh, fast paced, slow and steady, anywhere you coming. Uh, just want to connect for everyone who loves running. Hey, Runners Only with Dom Harvey.